Hello, I'm Dale Leftwich with Real Agriculture. Today I'm with Glenda Cleasy, Grow Team Advisor with Federated Co-op. How are you doing today, Glenda? I'm great, thank you, Dale. Glenda, we're here to talk about soybeans today. I know that's one thing that you really like to talk about. I do. <laughs> okay, the the question we have, though, is we've had uh, a lot of enthusiasm to grow soybeans over the last several years. It's mm -hmm. uh, new products are being developed, uh, all sorts of things. But uh, we've had a couple of tough years. So what is the feeling around soybeans going into this spring? Well, as I've been going around basically northern Saskatchewan to our retails, the feeling is that the acres are going to be down in soybeans and that you know a lot of that is likely due to the dry conditions that we've had over the last couple of years. It really has been dry and soybeans really do like uh, moisture. You, you want to just describe the, the need that they have and when the timing of that? Yeah well they you know, they definitely like moisture but at the right time. So like other crops they like moisture at seed fill and because soybeans are a later maturing crop that tends to happen later in the season for us. So late July and into August is when ideally soybeans like to get moisture. All the way through August would be great. As I said you really love soybeans though right? So uh, the, for you keeping them in the rotation is is something that you would that you probably think is a good idea. You want to outline a little bit about how a farmer goes through that decision making process? Well there's lots of decisions they're gonna have to make on farm and it's a business so profitability is certainly one of the things that they need to consider but I think when we look at the way things are today, uh, there's other things that maybe should be taken into consideration and that includes some of the agronomics of crop rotations. So we hear a lot about canola and canola wheat rotations and now with the recent release of the club root survey, particularly in Saskatchewan, mm. um, and just the awareness of the amount of club root that's going on, you know, looking, we might need to look at another crop in that canola wheat rotation so that we get that two year break that is being recommended. The other thing that we are also facing with other pulse crops or nitrogen fixing crops is a phanomyces impacting some areas right. for peas and lentils. And soybean is a non-host for a phanomyces and a break away from club root. So, you, you know, I think it is an opportunity if, if we can find the right agronomics to grow it well and have a good year that we can see a fit for soybeans in Western Canada and in Saskatchewan. And if we look at the, the breeding programs and the new varieties that are coming out, there are early maturity varieties coming, higher yielding varieties coming. And with the awareness of some of the protein concerns that have happened over the last couple of years, we're also seeing breeders paying more attention to protein. So I think ultimately we're going to get some great varieties that are going to be early maturing, high yielding and have the right protein for the right fit in Western Canada. And that will get us a nitrogen fixing crop that we can include in our rotation. It gets dry in the United States too, and uh, people grow, continue to grow soybeans. And this isn't, uh, as you said, the, the farmer has to make his decision based on what's most profitable for him. As the spring rolls around, and uh, would uh, would something like a wet spring, would that kind of thing, or are, uh, are there other kind of concerns that come into play uh, as the farmers kind of headed to the field and are making the decision in the next month or two? Well, I think there's going to be all kinds of decisions that are going to come into right. play. In, you yeah. know, there's fertility decisions, there's seed variety, seed availability decisions. Now they might be looking at something like club root impacting their some of their seed choices and just what they're looking at in rotation as a whole. And you're right, it can get dry in the U.S. and it can get dry here. And I think we just really need to learn how to properly grow and manage soybeans. And that's going to be take some time. If we look when canola first came in or flax first came in, those types of crops, it was a learning process to get to the point where we're getting the high yields that we are now. Right. And yeah, I look at some of the growers who have spent the last few years growing soybeans and learning how to grow them, and they have done a, a relatively good job of increasing their yields and learning what works best on their farm to get the yields that they need to get out of that soybean crop. So it's, uh, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, <laughs> like all of these sort of cliches that the, the, it is a good crop, it still has a place, but uh, as another cliche, don't bet the farm on soybeans, I guess. Um, yeah, I, if you aren't familiar with it or you're not comfortable with growing it, I would definitely start smaller acres um, if you want to give it a try. Again, I think there's opportunity long-term for that crop in Saskatchewan, and I'm really excited about that opportunity, but we do have to be aware that it does require some moisture and um, that those are the things that are going to be required that environment to produce the higher yields on soybeans. 
Okay, I just want to really thank uh, Glenda Cleasy for being with us today on Real Agriculture. Thanks a lot, Glenda. Thanks, Dale. Yeah.